again, it's me with another video. Hooray. So anytime I post a costume on the internet, not just on YouTube, I almost always get comments requesting help with patterns. I know you've seen the video title by now, so I know you know what's coming, but yes, it's true. I'm finally making a video related to patterns. If you're anything like me when I first started sewing, it wasn't the actual sewing part that scared me. It was the whole idea of making and following patterns because we all know if you mess up your patterns, then all of your hard work that you just put into sewing basically just goes right down the drain. Nobody wants to spend hours upon hours sewing only to find out that the garment doesn't fit. And I know you all know what I'm talking about because we've all been there. The problem with commercial patterns is that they all have existing measurements per size, but us humans come in completely different shapes, sizes, and proportions. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys how to customize the sizing of a leotard pattern to make sure it fits like a glove every time. Before we get started, I do just want to make a disclaimer that I am not professionally trained. I am fully self-taught and this is just a method that I found that works well for me. But if you do find this video helpful and you want to see more sewing and pattern related videos in the future, please don't forget to subscribe or, you know, leave a comment or give it a like or whatever, you know, do what you want. No one's forcing you to do anything. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Hello from the corner of my screen. <laughs> Editing magic, it's crazy. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna be using the Jay Lee 3891 pattern as my base. I have my handy dandy notes over here so we can discuss some measurements. For this specific costume, my client's measurements were as follows. Her bust was 37 inches, her waist was 28 inches, her hips were 41 inches, and her full torso was 63 inches. These measurements translate to V, W, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> These measurements translate to VSWW in J. Lee sizing. Now, according to J. Lee, you should pick the size that corresponds with your full bust measurement, which means we would be using size V. The problem is, my client's waist measurement is 28 inches, which corresponds with size S. The waist measurement for size V is actually 31 inches, which is a full three inches bigger than my client's actual waist measurement. Her hip measurement is 41 inches, which is size W, which is a full inch bigger than size V. And lastly, her torso measurement is 63 inches, which is again size W, which is a full inch and three quarters longer than size V. Based on these comparisons alone, it's very obvious that size V would not be an ideal fit. It wouldn't fit horrendously, but it just wouldn't hug in all the right places, specifically the waist. I could have just picked a size between size S and W to try to find a middle ground and make my life a little bit easier, but since there's such a large variation in her measurements, I just think that this method was more ideal for her measurements specifically. Essentially, what we're gonna do is combine all of these sizes to create a customized block pattern. Adjusting the pattern is actually a fairly simple process, so if you are interested to see how I did it, then just keep on watching. Okay, so to get started, I'm gonna lay out my pattern and place tracing paper on top of the top front panel. Since the chest measurement is size V, I'm gonna trace along the V line from the center chest to the top of the shoulder, along the armhole until I get to the side seam. Since her waist is size S, I'm going to mark the S line where the smallest part of her waist hits which is marked by a horizontal line on the pattern itself. Once I do this, I'm going to pick up at the side seam and draw a custom line that tapers in from V into S at the waist and back out to V at the bottom of the pattern piece. For the torso, I use the measurement associated to the bust measurement which is why we're tracing along V for all of our horizontal seam lines. I go in and add length into the torso after the fact which again I'll show you how to do later in the video. When I get to the bottom of the side seam, I'm going to trace along the V line of the bottom horizontal seam until I reach back to the center, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to move on to the front bottoms. Since I ended on the V measurement at the bottom of our top piece, I need to start the bottoms on the same line. 
However, her hip measurement, which is taken around the fullest part of her bum, is one size bigger, which is size W. So, I'm gonna trace along the V-line at the top of the pattern piece, and then once I get to the side seam, I'm gonna taper out from B to W. At this point, I'm going to mark my crotch seam line. Instead of tracing W, I'm gonna trace the V-line because again, our horizontal seam lines are what define the torso measurement and we need to keep them consistent with each other. From there, I go back to the bottom of the side seam and I follow the W line all the way down to the crotch seam. Then I just extend my crotch line out to meet with the W of the leg hole and that's it. Once that's finished, I go back to the top line and mark a quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's time to do the same thing to the back panels. For this specific pattern, the back is a little bit trickier because it's designed to have a seam at the waistline and up the back, but I just hate the way that looks. So I have to hack the pattern a little bit more in order to get rid of these seams. But just as I did for the front, I'm gonna follow the V from the center pattern along the shoulder seam and down the armhole. Again, once I get to the side seam, I taper in from V to S at the waist and back out to V at the bottom of the side seam. Then I trace V along the bottom horizontal line into the center of the pattern piece. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. If there were a center seam up the back, that means I'd have a quarter inch seam allowance per back panel. If I were to sew it together, I'd lose a half inch overall. Since we're eliminating the center seam altogether, that means I need to remove a half inch from the center of the pattern piece. The pattern piece is also designed to have a slight curve along the back seam, so it's not a perfectly straight line along the center like our front panel was. In order to change this, I take a ruler and line it up with the top corner and the bottom corner of the center of the pattern piece. Then I measure a half inch in and draw a straight line connecting the two. This will be my new center line on my pattern. From there, I mark a quarter inch seam allowance and move on to the back bottom panel. Just as I did in the front, I trace along the V-line for the top horizontal seam. Once I get to the side seam, I taper from V to W until I reach the leg hole line. From there, I trace the W line all the way along the leg hole until I reach the crotch seam. I trace along the V line at the crotch and connect it with the W line of the leg hole. After all my pattern pieces are traced and labeled, I cut them out using my rotary cutter. Now that I have all my pattern pieces prepped, I can focus on torso length. Currently, the torso length of our pattern is that of size V, which is 61 and 3 quarter inches. I rounded this up to 62 since you really won't feel a difference of a quarter inch. My client's torso length is 63, meaning we need to extend the torso by one inch overall. 
Since we have the front and back panel, we need to divide one inch by two, which gives us a half inch. This means we need to add a half inch to each panel in order to accommodate our new torso length. Thankfully, Jay Lee already has horizontal lines on their pattern pieces that show you where to add torso length if you need to. So I just lay my front and back panels onto the pattern and trace these lines onto my pieces. Now, I need to create a separate pattern piece that is basically just a half inch gap on my tracing paper, which you can see me doing here. You wanna make sure that there is excess paper on each side of your half inch gap because we're gonna be taping this into our panels. From here, all I'm gonna do is cut along the horizontal line on my panels and line the edges up along the drawn lines of my new half inch gap pattern piece. Once they're lined up nicely, I just tape my pieces in place. You need to make sure the center line of the top and bottom parts of your panels still line up, so make sure you're using a cutting mat like I'm using or a ruler to ensure it's straight before taping both into place. Once it's taped, I use a marker to draw a new line connecting the center and side seam lines and cut off any excess from the new half inch panel. Then I take my front bottom pattern piece and line up the quarter inch seam allowance lines with each other so the top and bottom pattern pieces overlap. This way I'm eliminating the seam allowance just as I would if I were sewing the pieces together. Again, make sure your center line is straight and then tape the pieces in place. And just like that, we have our complete front panel. Now I'm gonna repeat the exact same process with the back panels. You'll notice the back bottoms won't overlap perfectly with the top back panel like it did with the two front panels and that's okay. Just make sure the outermost edge is overlapping by your quarter inch seam allowance and that the center line is straight. Once finished, I now have two complete pattern pieces. After my pieces are completed, I always check that the side seams are the exact same length. This helps to ensure all the work I put into the adjustments was done correctly and that the pattern will line up properly as I'm sewing it together. Since the tracing paper I'm using is quite flimsy, I like to cut a duplicate out of thicker craft paper so I can reuse this block pattern multiple times without worrying about destroying the paper. Alright, so here I'm just showing you the comparison between a true size V pattern and my altered version of this pattern. You can definitely see the biggest difference in the waistline. If we hadn't gone in and tapered the waist, the Leo would absolutely have too much excess fabric in the waist area and would not cinch in the way it should, which would affect the fit overall. If we didn't add length in the torso and widen the bum pattern, the Leo would also likely ride up as she moved, which is not ideal during a performance. By making simple changes to patterns, you can really make a big difference in the way it fits, and this doesn't just apply to this specific J. Lee pattern. I've actually used this method on tons of different patterns, and it's always worked out just fine. Anyways, that's it for me, you guys. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.